A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold, in view of her, is a little sand, and before her silver is to be counted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches in her hands. The word of the Lord. God instructs the heart, writes the Jesuit Jean-Pierre de Caussade. God instructs the heart not with ideas, but with pains and contradictions. Most of us would say that we know what sort of path we're on. We all have certain expectations and desires, certain needs that, that we admit. But part of what the, the divinely inspired author is telling us today is that, in fact, what we think we need isn't really what we do need. The only one who knows what we need and can give us what we need is, of course, the Lord. And that's part of what wisdom is, is accepting that the Lord is the only one who knows, accepting that the Lord is the only one who can help us find our fulfillment and help us find our true happiness and peace. So wisdom is this relinquishing ourselves abandoning ourselves to the divine will. When I was in high school, there was something my sophomore year that I pleaded for, prayed and pleaded for desperately. And I've told a couple of you this before, um, but for the rest of you, this might be a little new. It was that when I was in grade school, from fourth to tenth grade, I loved choir more than just about anything else. And it, it, it was something I was really passionate about. I was never a fantastic singer, but I loved singing and being in choir. So once we got to high school, we actually had to try out for choir. And so there were, in 10th grade, there was the varsity choir, which was for 10th graders with some 11th graders. And the next choir up was a concert choir for 12th graders and the 11th graders that were good enough. So going into 11th grade, I had to try out, and I really wanted to be in concert choir. My sophomore year, they got to go to Vienna for some sort of fancy choir thingy, and they got to wear, they always wore these kind of gaudy blue velvet robes, but I was really excited about that. I didn't care how tacky they were. It was worth it to be in concert choir. And so I play, prayed really hard for this to God. I thought, it's not that much to ask for. It's something that I know will make me happy, something that will make me feel good about myself. So of course God should be willing to give me this little piece. So I tried out, and then the day came when the, the choir instructor put the lists on the board for the choir, for who was in what, what choir. And there was my name right on the list. The list for varsity choir, not concert choir. I was one of the, the lame old 11th graders that would stay in the 10th grade varsity choir. Well, it wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. And it was something that I'd wanted so bad, I, I wasn't sure why God didn't let me be in concert choir. But eventually I figured out, it must, if he didn't want me to be in choir, maybe there's a reason for that. Eventually, in the end, I decided not to take choir at all. Instead, I took Spanish. Because I took Spanish, I was able, in college, to do an abroad program when I traveled to Spain. And in Spain, I had one of the single most important faith experiences of my life, which eventually led me to discerning religious life and brought me here. So if I had gotten into concert choir like I wanted, I wouldn't be here now. And I can only understand that looking backwards six or seven years later and see the path that God set out and the, the, the way it wound around my life. Another thing, or part of what the author says here, he says he chose wisdom rather than light. And in choosing wisdom, Rather than light, that means he's also in some way accepting darkness. So I think we can say that wisdom, in fact, is a darkness. And part of that darkness is that we have this path set for us that God wants us to follow. 
And we can't see it, of course. We can't see a foot in front of us. Only later, six, seven, eight years later, maybe we can sort of look backward and see some of the pieces set out for us. So wisdom is abandoning ourselves to this path, letting go of control, allowing God to be in control. Wisdom is being afraid of that darkness, but entering it nonetheless, drowning in a darkness, knowing that God is controlling and protecting us. And it is in that darkness that we come to see and know the Lord himself.